be on April 6th. <clears throat> so April um, 6th. It's going to be like a BBSI sponsored, but um, he's got his parkour core program. He's going to be certifying a couple of his guys in parkour. So we'll be able to see that uh, for people who, you know, maybe want to expand into that program. Uh, Scott Axman's going to be there. Um, he's got a, a really great program. He talked about the Mylar effect up in Connecticut. So he's going to continue with that. Derek Frader's coming up. Awesome. So um, it should be a fun event. So, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a great event right there. I can't wait for that. Yeah, it's because it's, it's really funny. William Pierce and I have had different views on different things, but basically we get along and respect each other. And I think it's gonna be great going up in this school and see all that he's got done. I, I think a lot of people want to do that. I was also talking to Sentry. So I'm going to try to do a tour of Century so people can take a tour. We have lunch at Century and everything on Friday and then do Instructor College on Saturday. So it would be a good one. Oh, yeah. we so doing a um, webinar with my son. Yes, sir. We got one scheduled for today. What time is that? Uh, it's going to be at uh, it's 1.30 Eastern. 1.30 Eastern, okay. Maybe you can put a link on the Rainmaker page in case anyone wa wants to jump in on that too. I can. I'll uh, I'll get that posted on over there. Nice. Well, <clears throat> let me kind of just share my screen first before I forget to do that. So I was talking to William Pierce, and we we're talking about uh, what we can do together in uh, this month. Uh, he said that he was really going to get back into the path. He wants to teach people how to create the, the path through Rainmaker uh, to start automating everything. Um, so he's going to be doing that. I said, well, if you're going to be that much into the systems, automated systems, I'm going to start from the beginning with systems uh, that I feel is necessary for doing a martial arts school. And I started thinking about these, and there are really tons of systems. Uh, the whole idea, again, with systems is to make sure that um, we can duplicate results. Uh, I was kind of talking to Kent Brown a few minutes ago. He's on his way out of town. He's going down to Disney World. He's got some – He's uh, actually, I was pretty impressed on this. He hadn't told his students, but I said, man, if I had that type of bragging rights, I would tell my students. He's going to go down there and do a 5K. He's going to do a half marathon. And then the following day after the half marathon, he's going to do a full marathon. Um, so he's going to do that. And I said, well, that's huge bragging rights. Congratulated him on uh, just the effort and the training required for that. And I said, what do you do to make sure your student, your school is running on time? Everyone's doing the exact same things you would do. And we we're talking about systems in place. Um, I started thinking probably one of the most important system is getting students from white belt to black belt. Uh, we've all, all been through curriculum. We've all been through some type of training. Most of the systems that people use to get people to white belt to black belt are the exact systems that they came up through. Uh, one of the things that I think made me a little bit different when I was doing my program, I really thought a lot about how long it should take to get someone to get, to get black belt. Um, I started thinking, how many students do I want to make it to black belt? And that's one of the things I, I asked Kemp this morning ago. If I gave you 100 students uh, today in three years or in five years, whatever your time limit, how many would you like to see get black belt? And he said 40%. I go, I think that's a, a great goal, but I said, I don't know the reality in that. So after we got off the phone, I started doing a lot of charting. I was going to uh, – do something a little bit different today, but I really want to kind of get into this system. This system, I think, is really, really important. So when you're doing a system, how is it going to get done, and how are you going to quantify your desired results? In other words, if I'm teaching you know, one of my staff members about how to do – can everyone just kind of make sure they're mute right now so I do feedback? I know if I'm going to teach someone how to do phone calls and I'm going to teach them my phone script and I say, okay, out of 10 people that call, I expect you to get 80% to make an appointment. And so we start going and all of a sudden I find out that she's answering the phone 
and she's getting 60% to make appointments. I know that she's not doing a good enough job because I set a standard for 80%. She's getting 60%, which is fine. That just means going back to the table and do a little more training. But anytime I do a system, I have to make sure that I'm on track. So if I'm trying to get black belts, and I want a certain percentage to become black belts in five years, a certain percentage to be black belts in three years, how do I know I'm doing good? Do I have to wait to the end of the five or three years to see my results? And the answer is no. But again, that's one of the things that's so important when making a system. We have to have a way of checking up. Uh, you may not be doing certain things in your school. In other words, you may not be answering the phone. But again, you want to have results to check up. Uh, one of the other stats we look for is if I get 10 people to come in and try my program, um, my uh, qualifying thing is 80%. So I want to make sure if 10 people come into a trial class, 80% of those people or 8 people show up. But if I don't get that, then I'm looking for improvement in those areas. Ah, there we go, I found it. So after talking to Kemp, I came and said, okay, I want 25% of students to make black belt in five years. So I must have a yearly retention rate of 75%. So if I want to get, I start with 100 students, I want to get 25 of those uh, to get black belt, I have to have a yearly retention of 75%. If I want to get 40%, in other words, you're sitting in your desk go, hey, Silva, I think that's a pretty good idea, but I think you're setting your standards a little bit short. If I have 100 people, I want at least to get 40%. Well, I have two choices. I can give my black belt in three years. In other words, um, when I started doing my stats, um, I found out after three years, I would have, I would still have 40 uh, students. After five years, I'm going to bet down to 25 students. So if I want to improve my chances of getting 40%, I got to just change my standards. Instead of black belt being a five-year program, if I do in a three-year program, or I can improve my retention to 85%. So in other words, instead of having a 75% retention, if I improve it to 85%, I could have 40% of my students go. The reason I'm saying this is if I start tracking my retention, on a monthly basis, I know immediately if I'm gonna make my goal in three years. So if I'm not, in other words, if all of a sudden I find out too many people are quitting, why are they quitting? Does it have to do with the program? Does it have to do with the testing? Does it have to do with my requirements? But again, if I'm gonna have a system to make a certain goal, I have to have standards or benchmarks that I can check along the way. And the closer I can make these benchmarks, the more I'm going to be successful in results. So when you start thinking of systems in your school, don't just say, I want a system to do this. I want a system to do that. And I'm looking for these results. To know these results, I have to have a checklist along the way. Now let's just check out some reality in this situation. If you have 100 students and lose three a month, you lose 36 a year. That's a retention of 64%. At this real average, uh, year one, you're gonna end up with 64 students. Year two, you're gonna have 40. Year three, you're gonna have 25. Year four, you're gonna have 16. In year five, you're only gonna have 10%. That's pretty much a reality. If I was going to put something online and say, what's the average attrition of schools in America? Um, everyone's, uh, the difference between attrition and retention. Attrition is how many people quit. Retention is how many people you keep. So out of 100%, you know, half or part of that is attrition. Those are quitters. The rest of that is retention. Those are people staying with our program. If I put this question out on Facebook, probably the answer is going to be 7%. That answer has been around a long time. At 7%, everyone would have quit by year three. By year three, you're going to get down to 4%. 
So why is this so important? It's probably the most important system you can have done. We know that part of the nature of a martial arts school is we've got to get new students, we've got to get new students, and that's the nature of the business because not everyone stays with the program. But the second part of the equation is, yeah, I want to get new people, but I want to make sure I keep as many people as possible. And you see a big difference happens with small differences in results. So at, if I want to get 25% uh, of people to black belt, well, then I'm going to have to uh, have a retention rate of 75%. And if you're just at an average school and you lose 7% a month, well, 7% a month is 84% a year. So if I lose that many at year three, I'm going to get zero black belts. I remember when I first came down to Florida, I was talking to another school owner, and actually um, Grandmaster Ed Parker was still alive, and we're talking, this one school owner had very few black belts. Um, I don't know how many I had in Connecticut, but it, it, was, it was close to 100. And he was saying to me, he goes, well, obviously your standards aren't that good. Look how many black belts you have. And then my thinking is, you promoted so many black belts, you must be a terrible instructor because everyone quits. So you have to kind of start thinking that a good school with good instruction and a good program should produce a lot of black belts. And this is uh, what I think is really neat. I was watching uh, one of my uh, clients, or one of our clients, is a Rainmaker client, his name is Adam Gilbert. I met Adam Gilbert probably about 10 years ago. He had a very, very small school in Mesa, Arizona. And I thought it was really neat because he had a picture online, yes, of him with all his black belts. And there was probably 35 people in the picture. And I just felt so proud of him. <laughs> I didn't have 35 students when I met him. And now because of his change of thinking, there was change in presentations, the way he does his program, now he's got probably more black belts than he had students, uh, you know, five to ten years ago. So I thought that was very, very important. So if we can start thinking about systems, I think this is the most important. Uh, we're going to get into other systems like answering the phone and marketing and intros. But starting to uh, this one is utmost important. When you start thinking about that and you're uh, developing this, you have to decide how long it's going to be from white belt to black belt. Um, it could be you're thinking the same way you're doing now. You know, in the, the past, it's always been six years. So then, okay, that's fine. When we start thinking of the system, decide in your mind what you're satisfied with. When I had my school and I was actively teaching, I used to think three years to black belt was pretty good. But then I had a challenge in my head because I said, if a kid starts at eight years old, all of a sudden he's going to get his black belt at 11, and that's kind of young. And so I started thinking, let me divide it in half. I would really like six years. So if someone comes in at eight, at 14, okay, now he's done six years of training. He deserves to be a black belt. So I divided things in half. I had year one to three for junior black belt. My junior black belt's got a black belt, but it had a stripe around the center. So when they got a stripe around the center, they got a white stripe. Three months later, they would test again, and they would get a black belt, but now they would have a yellow stripe. So the stripes in the center were all the ranks that they just had to repeat as a junior black belt. It was my thinking that, again, six years is a good long program. After three years, though, you know, under the, the training in our program, they could go to a local tournament and they probably could do pretty good so they could hold their own. So junior black belt's fine, but to get a solid black belt, it took six years. I really like this program because after three years, I'll be talking to the students and parents and go, wow, that went by so fast. That was their thinking. So when you start talking about getting to solid black belt, which would be their next program, they really didn't consider a long commitment because the first years went by so fast once it was done, they thought of nothing of signing up for an additional three years. So that happened to be my goal. So once you deserve, uh, um, determine the length of time, then you have to decide how many belts and how long between belts. 
Um, I don't know about you when a kid, but when I was a kid, uh, I used to live on a lake and we used to kind of uh, tr try to catch small animals. We'd have like this box on a stick and then we have a string to this stick and we're trying to get a rabbit in the box and then pull the string down. Well, we tried to do this. It was our thinking. I don't know how successful I was. But if we put a couple of breadcrumbs before the box, well, now you, if you're going to get a rabbit or something, they're going to grab one bed, breadcrumb and go to the next. And we found it was easier getting someone to follow breadcrumbs if the breadcrumbs are closer together. Well, this is the same way we're going to motivate your students. We're going to put the breadcrumbs closer together. So three months, four months per belt, well, the breadcrumbs are pretty close together. So decide how many belts you have, divide that into total number of months. That's the number of months per belt. If all of a sudden it seems too long, in other words, you do that and go, wow, well, that'd be like six to eight months per belt. Well, maybe you have to do something. Maybe you have to decide, I'm going to add more belts in, so now I have more steps. I have more steps, now I have, again, the breadcrumbs closer together. So this, again, is designing your system. How many months do I want a student to train before they get their black belt? How many steps am I going to be in between? The closer the steps, chances are the higher the retention. Uh, next thing you do after that is, if I have this many steps, then I have to break it down even closer, so I'm gonna break down into stripes. So if I have three months between belts, we're gonna do three stripes per belt. If I'm gonna do five uh, um, months per belt, then we're gonna have five stripes. I mean, that's just the way you're gonna plan out your program. The importance of stripes is not only putting your breadcrumbs closer together, now that your instructors are really watching the students. I used to tell my instructors in Florida, we're going to have strike testing at the end of the month. I expect every student to pass. It's your responsibility to make sure everyone gets a strike. And they would look at me and roll their eyes because, you know, they came up a little hardcore and they go, oh, so we're supposed to give it away? I said, I didn't say that. I said, you're supposed to make sure they're ready. Now, you're watching them every single day when they're doing training. If all of a sudden they're into training and you notice the students have a hard time with this self-defense technique, don't wait to strike test to fail him. Do what it's going to take now. Give him a leadership member to work with him. Write the technique down. Video the technique. Do whatever it's going to take to get the student to learn that. So I want all eyes on the student. I want all my instructors to have a critical eye. If someone's not keeping up, let's do what it takes to motivate him to get. Now, does that mean everyone passes? No. But I want to make sure that at least 80% of my students have the ability to pass a belt test every time we have a belt test. If we're not getting 80%, that's not up to my standards. Uh, now, another standard that I have, because again, we have to uh, quantify everything. How do I know my students are getting better? Um, is it how much they memorized? Or is it how well they performed? I was talking to Kemp this morning. I said, I took over school one time, and all of a sudden I'm looking at black belt testing, and I go, I'm not really happy. I mean, I would be proud to say these kids are my black belts. And the instructor goes, why? I go, well, to me, a black belt should be able to kick head high. They should have that flexibility. To me, a black – and so we start going on and on on where I can actually draw a picture in my mind and his mind of what a black belt should look like. He goes, well, you know, some people can't kick head high. I go, well, they can't hit, kick head high because they didn't train in flexibility, this and this. But it's our goal to make sure when we get the black belt, kids can kick head high. It's important that they do this and they do that. So, again, now you have to have qualifications for stripe testing and qualifications for performance. So let's just do a big review. How long does it take to get black belt? How many belts are you going to have? How can you make sure that you're putting your breadcrumbs close together? And how can you make sure now you can break that into monthly presentation skills? Um, I remember I'm going to use a <laughs> back in the day. Back in the day, I had a real challenge with kids at a certain level. 
Uh, when kids were going from orange to black belt, I, it seemed that they didn't get any better. They seemed that some didn't memorize their self-defense techniques, but I was losing students at that rate. So I looked at the curriculum and I said, okay, maybe I have either too much curriculum or the qualifications are too hard. So I made changes in that curriculum. I didn't water down the system. I just rearranged on how I was going to teach. So a purple belt, instead of having five self-defense techniques, I cut it down to three, and I added one into blue belt and one into orange belt, So or uh, one into green belt. So I kept the same qualifications throughout the black belt cycle. I just had less for that belt. When I started looking at them, I also found the techniques were too similar. Um, Again, when you're teaching with younger kids, some kids are smarter. They can just pick it up. Some kids may be good physically, but they're not that smart in memorization. So the important thing is I was willing to make, make changes because my goal was long-term. Long-term, I wanted to get a lot of black belts. If I was losing at purple belt, I wasn't going to see my long-term goal. I had to make changes at purple belt. Okay, once I made that, now I'm having a higher percentage and my long-term results get better. Now, long-term results don't just necessarily mean you have quality black belts, because as we're in business, we also have to put food on the table. The less students I lose, the easier it is for me to increase my income. Nothing wrong with that. Um, when we start talking about money, money is a very important thing when you're running your martial arts school. If you don't have the money, you're not going to pay your rent. If you don't have the money, you're not going to be able to uh, hire staff. If you don't have the money, you're not going to be able to give all the services. So when we're designing this, yes, I want this many black belts. I want to have this much attrition and retention. At the same time, I want to be able to improve my financial situation so the school gets stronger and I have more opportunities to do things with my students. So that's what I would like to have you work on. Again, um, if you're just saying, well, <laughs> this seems like a lot of stuff to do. Um, don't you just have a plug-in system? Yes, we do. If you follow our curriculum, uh, we have elements curriculum, which is a system uh, that we did in our Mesa school. Tom Baker, uh, I was just talking to Jason Smith. They find uh, this system that works them well. I have everything broken down. It doesn't cost rainmakers anything. I have class plans done for 36 months, and I have class plans done for after black belt. So if you want to get into that and you started looking on the uh, uh, vault page for uh, rainmakers, and just check out some of that. It has been done for you. If you say, man, I'm not going to change my curriculum. I've been doing Tong Sudo for a long time. I love Tong Sudo, and this is what I want to do. But I want to do. I do want to have better retention. I do want to make more black belts. Well, take the ideas and then uh, adapt that to your own situation. I mean, basically, that's what I had to do with the Kenpo system. Uh, when I did to Coral Springs, I was still doing Kenpo. So I just had to modify. I had to actually add in belts, which is like uh, to some traditional Ken Kenpo people, that's like changing parents. But I had to get more steps in, so I needed a couple of belts. So um, we had a red and black belt, and then we flipped it up so it was like red on top black on the bottom for three months. The students flipped it over, so now they have black on top, red on the bottom. But again, it's being creative. Uh, the important thing was to have more steps. So to get more steps, I had to add in more colors. So that's our first system for you to start doing. Uh, when I was talking to William today, I said this is kind of a couple of things I want to do. I want to talk about systems. I want to talk to clients and see that is this a system that they just have to modify and improve on, or is this a system that they totally have to create? So, again, that's up to you. Any help you may want or uh, questions you need answered, uh, just, uh, just type them into the Rainmaker Business Solution page, uh, or you can email me. If you email me, it's greg at gregsilva.com. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Do we have any questions or comments today? We have a lot of new people on. Uh, 
I, I appreciate that. Um, the Monday and the Tuesday meetings are very, very similar. Wednesday, um, William and I are going to be on. We're going to talk about the importance of setting up the path. And then on Thursday, he's actually doing a workshop. So if you don't have your path set up through Rainmaker, you want to attend his Thursday meetings. Um, he doesn't just tell you how to do it. He goes through it so you can actually do this creation at the same time. So his workshop's a little bit longer, and they're very detailed. So try to attend both. And again, for the next two months, we're going to be talking about different systems and how to implement them in your school. I appreciate everyone on today, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back tomorrow at uh, 12 noon Eastern. Thank you. Right. Good day. Good day.